Absolutely. So I, uh, let me see if I can bring up my screen here real quick. So basically view controllers, windows controllers, um, both inherit from the same controller base and they're just used in different contexts depending on what, how you want them to behave. So let me uh, bring up my Visual Studio with all my projects up here. There we go. We should be able to see my screen now. There we go. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Okay. This is going to be uh, solution eight because why not? <laughs> And I'm going to do Windows. I always, um, I always start with a Windows project, just because I like Windows projects. Uh, leave all that blank. Make sure that. Oh, what the? Hang on. You, 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 you chose to be B. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I wish you could choose who, to install. Who would I choose that anyway? I mean, you can watch me struggle through. Uh, <laughs> uh, Twenty point one. No, you're choosing no, that's, basic. That's version right? basic. That's version basic. <laughs> there we go. Filters. Good work there, Microsoft team. Love this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, there we go. Solution. I always like name and like delete me. Delete yeah. me solutions from <laughs> solutions something so I know that I have to delete them later. I mean, I reformat my 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 machine at least once a year, usually twice a year. So they don't. Oh, I do it like every month. So <laughs> <laughs> you lose all your VP projects when you do this. <laughs> uh, no, the the thing is that uh, virtualization. Uh, <laughs> what you need is vir truly virtualization. <laughs> so even if I restart, I when I start again, I have the same mess on my project file folder. All right, so if you're not familiar with the snippets that we use, if you use Code Rush, great. Uh, we at LlamaChan have code snippets that we use to make things a little bit quicker, uh, which are usually prop XAF, to give us our list of uh, quickly creatable properties. So I'm gonna do a string for name, we'll do a string email address, and a date time start or join date. Great. Uh, let me get back out of this. Do a con whoops. Contact. First name, do last name. And if I want to do my association, I'm doing a prop XAF1 in this case. This is going to be a client. And then on the client side, I'm doing a prop XAF collection, reflection aggregated. I'm going to do aggregated because the client basically owns the contacts. It's not coming from a shared pool. And that's it. Let me get... Uh, Connection string going here. Let run. <clears throat> so controllers let you interact with views, the business objects, with other controllers, um, with templates, right? Everything you want to be doing with the application, you're generally doing from a controller. So the question is, are you doing it from a Windows controller or are you doing it from a uh, view controller? And then if you're using a view controller, are you using the, the kind of base view controller or are you doing a object view controller where you can scope it down a little bit further? So here's my basic application. I'm gonna put uh, Acme company. Uh, Acme, um, pick a date, great. Contact. Let's go. And we'll go ahead and just create a controller um, straight out of the box. Nothing, nothing exciting about it first. 
So when you're deciding where to put your controller, that's where you get um, some consideration going in terms of scope. Are you going to have this interacting with um, an individual control or a template that is platform specific? So am I dealing with a Windows control or a web control? Or is it just a controller that I need to apply across all platforms? Uh, so that's the case here. In that case, I'm gonna put it in the dot module. If I'm doing platform specific, of course, it has to be in that platform specific module. And then there's two, two approaches to creating controllers, either through uh, the add dev express item or just a straight class. If you use the add dev express item with a view controller, you get the designer component, which is really nice. So let's do a sample view controller. So I have the designer and then the background I have the controller code. If you're doing it just in code, it, it's great. You don't have to use a, you don't have to worry about the designer piece of it, but you have to code in the actions and stuff manually. So let's just I did, the whole, I did a whole blog post about that. You can read that on it. Oh, did you? Perfect. Yeah. Oh, my toolbox is initializing. Oh, oh. Yeah, it's, not, it's not one of the bad ones today. Let me drop uh, just a simple action on here. And we'll just call this uh, test action. There we go. So because I haven't defined any kind of scope to this controller, it's gonna be available everywhere. You can see I have a test action up here, which is a contacts list view, which is actually the client underscore contacts underscore list view. Um, it doesn't do anything. And that's also on the client detail view. So it's up here. Uh, if I go back to the client list view, it's also here. So there's no scope to this at all. It's just everywhere. And that's for every single view. That's why it's called a view controller. If I was doing a window controller, we can go back and change that real quick. Let's go back and code. And the only thing that defines it is this piece right here. So we're doing a window controller. Again, has no scope on it. Oh, hang on, can't do the view controls created. There's no controls created in the Windows controller. So you're gonna see I have two two actions here now within this window. And that's because this is a window and this is also an embedded window. I'm using the tabbed MDI. Um, you'll notice that my sub, my sub view here, my nested list view doesn't have that controller because it doesn't have its own window. It's just a view. So that's the difference between a view controller and a window controller is really to what uh, level it's scoped to. You'll even notice that things like the pop-ups, that's a date pop-up, let me pick uh, contact. This may not work on a uh, pop-up view, but yeah, you wouldn't see it here. Um, you, yeah, so there's basically, there's main windows and there's nested windows you can choose to uh, scope this down to. And scope is really important when you're creating controllers. People, I see it all the time where they'll add an action um, and then they'll scope the action rather than scope the whole controller. And basically when you scope a controller down, let me change this back to a view controller because it's easier to scope. You're basically saying what context am I using this in? So am I using it on a particular view or a view type or an object type? So if we look at the, uh, if we look at the properties over here on the view controller itself, you can see the target view ID. I can specify a particular ID or a view nesting, whether it be a uh, root or a nested. And then the target view type would be a detail view, uh, list view, or dashboard view. And also the target object type. I shouldn't have clicked that. It takes forever to come on. Well, it wasn't too bad today. Uh, a nice change that came about probably, I want to say three or four years ago, was the ability to specify multiple target detail views, just separated by, a, I think it's a comma or something. Does that, I didn't knew that. So that's yeah, for me. can do that. Um, I, I think I think it's semicolon. Okay, so I, mean, I was I was answering a question on the chat. Can you say that again? What what we didn't know? <laughs> uh, and I mean, you can like specify like more than one view ID. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, you can actually say any, but it, and a semicolon and this uh, other one. So it would be for everything except that one. So there are a lot of permutation there. That's a really nice. Uh, that, that that is new for me. <laughs> that is new for me. <laughs> Learn from new. 
Um, yeah, really, really cool. They've done that, but the the scope is really important because it really defines where this thing's going to show up. And some people will keep the controller not scoped down at all, and they'll just scope down the action. The issue with that is that the controller then gets created for every view, even though you're only using the action. The only purpose of this uh, controller is to have that action. It's being used everywhere, and it doesn't need to be. So I usually recommend that people. Uh, scope that down at the controller level instead. And you can use the designer to do that. Uh, personally, what we've done over time, we've, we've started putting the targets up here. So do like target view type. Hey, okay, that equals view type dot list view. And then if I want to put a target object type, I'll put target object type equals type of uh, we'll do contact. And so before you could do the target view types with multiple views uh, specified, you either had to create separate controllers, you had to create one generic controller that you then uh, scope down based on whether or not um, the view is of a particular type, um, or you had to apply an interface to those types and then create your interface or create your controller scope down to that interface. One question, Dave, is like, what is your approach? Because in here, we usually, what we do is that uh, we create a controller per view. For example, if you're going to make a controller for a customer detail view, we call it customer detail view controller. And then if it's going to be for a list view, customer list view controller, and we have like really specific uh, scopes. So we end up with a lot of controllers in general. So that's how you do it, or you use another pattern? I try to make things as generic as possible. So if it's something very specific, then yeah, okay, you're gonna be you're gonna be doing one controller per view. Um, and depending on what it is, that makes that makes sense. Uh, if it's something that you know you create a controller for one view, but then during a customer or a client implementation, you change that view or you do a view variant, mm -hmm. uh, then your controller no longer works. Right, so those kind of runtime customizations I try to account for as well. Mm -hmm. So I try, I'm only trying to make my controllers as generic as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, and then if there's an action on a view that just shouldn't be there, so if, if I have a you know a custom contact view, I can just pull that action out mm -hmm. from that view at that time. Well, actually, what we do in here is that we try to do like in general try to follow the solid design pattern. So one of the one of the principles is the interfaces. So in the end, we, we do the controllers by interface because nice. it's not about the type, it's about if it's implement this interface, it needs this. So in that sense, it's like even more like narrowed down to like one specific functionality. If this type implements this interface, then the controller should run and show whatever it needs to show. And the domain components were really cool for that too because they were completely interface driven. Uh, and it actually allowed for things like multiple We have characters. a talk with Dennis about domain components like last week. Did you? <laughs> yes, and because I wanted to create my <laughs> open source version of it, I say like, please don't. What he <laughs> like, said was, please stop it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I, are you I, doing? Yeah. What are you doing? No, the, the thing is that, uh, okay, maybe for self context, it might not work, but we do a lot of XPO type of project, just XPO uh, base. So in that sense, we might have to, I mean, we want to create a, a, something like that. We have some ideas, but I guess I will show that later. So, mm -hmm. Awesome. We'll wrap this up real quick, guys. Um, mm -hmm. I know we want to talk about other things for sure. So uh, let me just bring up, talk about scope a little bit more, and then just talk about the other type of view controllers we can create. So uh, you'll see my actions disappeared, even though we're on a list view. When they get into a client detail view, it's not up here anymore, but it's been scoped down to list views that are contact only. So I see it here. And I should see it over here. So that is a regular view controller. There are two extensions you can do uh, on top of that. So you can do a public part one the class um, sample view controller two, where you're doing an object view controller. And this lets you specify a view type and an object type. So if I wanted to do a list view based on contact, I can do that right here. And now I can just work with my controller. It's already pre-scoped for me. 
I can also do a beware. Uh, there's, there's one thing to consider uh, or beware of that. If you want to use the designer uh, to specify the actions, if you use the generic one, the object view contro uh, uh, controller of li list view and contact, you uh, don't have the possibility anymore to uh, specify actions in, in, in the designer. Uh, and that's not a limitation of, of DevExpress or XAF. It's just a Visual Studio thing. So yeah. uh, Visual Studio uh, uh, designer files don't work with generics. Yeah. So that, that gets asked a lot. So these are really useful. You're absolutely right. These are really useful if you're doing non-action controllers. So if you're trying to apply uh, logic to other controllers, um, where you're doing something that doesn't require an action, uh, then these are really useful. So that's absolutely bang on. Yeah, you, you have to be aware that if you want to create actions, you can, but you have to code them yourself. So real quick, uh, sorry to interrupt, Dave. So Herman is asking on the chat, how do you hide a simple actions? Going to the model and using the hiding actions under the views or everything. So that's an approach, but you can also do it in code. You can actually in a controller say, and the set up the active or the enable. So active if you, if you want to hide it completely or enable if you want to like gray it out so they cannot disable it, so they cannot use it. And just put a reason like, I don't like this action to be active in this view. False. <laughs> and that's it. That's I don't know if, if that makes sense. So that's something um that's something I've picked up over the years is I actually put the like this dot name or just name. Um which will give the current controller name for why it's active or disabled. Uh that way when I go run the diagnostics to figure out why an action isn't enabled, it tells me the controller it's in versus whatever bogus text I decided to put in randomly. Nice. Um, so I find that's a little, little bit easier in terms of debugging. If, if, you, if, you, if your uh, app is, is uh, getting really, really large with co large complicated actions, I would, uh, or with multiple modules that, that can interact with each other, uh, then I would, would use get type of the controller with full name. So you, uh, because the control name is, is just the, the, the class name and doesn't inherit the, the namespace. So that's another tip. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually we do that, Manuel, that we use the full class name because it will include the, the assembly and so on. So it's yes, like yeah. unique. It's like the full name of, of yeah. a person. Yeah. So it, it is even better because you can locate it between assemblies because yeah. what's the main problem that we, if you have more than one? Uh, that, that's, that, that's the error you get if, you, if you're using uh, generic mm -hmm. controllers. Sorry. Wonderful. Let's put that back there now. That builds. The other, uh, the other approach you can take is the target object criteria to enable and disable actions. Uh, so because I'm currently basing this on contact, I can do where something like first name uh, equals John. It has to be either true for at least one or true for all. You can pick a selection dependency type that requires at least one thing to be selected or one or more. Let's take one or more. So when I run this now, oops, good day. Run that. So you'll see my actions currently enabled because my first name is John. If I put uh, Brother William in, that action becomes disabled automatically which is kind of cool. And that's just built in from one of their, from the, one of the DevExpress controllers. It just looks at that criteria, uh, evaluates against the selection, and then enables or disables based on that, the selected items. Is there anything I missed, guys? Is that pretty good? Uh, I think that's, that you covered nice. like, uh, everything. That's nice. And the question that I was uh, having on the chat is, if you use, instead of enable, active, it won't be gray out like it's doing right now. It will be completely hide it. You won't It'll even see it. Exactly. Yeah, so if we do um, simple action uh, active. And what I really like about the actions is that they're, um, they're really receptive to changes on the fly. So if I even keep this, let me keep this uh, active. But let me put, 
some code into the execute, I can just remove it once it's been clicked. One thing that I learned from Dave is when you were naming the actions, if you like in the ID or the name, you put action before, then when you go to the model, you have all your actions that you did on the top and exactly. all the actions from Dev Express like following through. So that's really nice tip. It's a small one, but it makes a whole of a difference. Yeah. Yeah, so here you can see again, disabled because of that rule. But since I'm on John, if I click test action, it just goes away. It's nice. very- there's one thing I want to mention. Uh, um, um, Dave, can you go into the app, uh, app config file and enable the diagnostics action? And that, 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 that's, that's the thing you should have always on in development mode. Because uh, sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to, 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 to uh, figure out why an action is, isn't active or isn't enabled or something like this. Have you noticed that in the web version, there is almost no space to read this. You have to copy this and put it in a notepad or something because it's the, the, the space to read it is almost... I, I think you can control F into that. Yeah. There's a lot of data here. I actually, yeah. I rarely use these uh, myself, but... But uh, if, if it's, it's, it's good to troubleshoot. You can control F with it, so... What's handy? There it is. There you go. Now it's active false, and now you can see the control is active. Uh, False? No, I uh, missed it. But, oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, there it is. And now there's the name. Uh, uh, now it is enabled and it's active, true. And if you click it and search again for, the, for it, then there should be a reason into the item key one. No, uh, you, you have to execute the action because right now it's enabled and it's is sorry. disabled. Yeah, that, that was the, the thing I was, yeah. And, th and that is the, is, the, is the reason why we say put in the name of the controller. Mm -hmm. uh, Next one, right? Caption deletes. Uh, yeah, uh, that, that's because you called it simple action with a with a small. Uh, but never mind. Info is there. Oh, it is. I actually one. Do I have to do the the child window or the basic diagnostics up here? No, it should be the child window. Right. De de depending on where the control is defined. <laughs> Yeah, fair See, e e even if we're MVP, sometimes the stuff don't work. Absolutely. <laughs> this is especially, live. Especially, especially live. <laughs> especially live. And it calls because, because it's not scripted. It's, uh, but, but never mind. The, yeah, the, the, I, the, I want to let everyone know that we have no preparation whatsoever, no agenda. So we just met 10 minutes before we start the community stand up and we just start sharing what we know. So it, <laughs> sometimes it's going to happen. So. <laughs> We actually, we created a, like a little helper module. It's available somewhere on the, the uh, Dev Express uh, help center, where if you're having an issue where something's not behaving properly, you can add this module in and you can actually turn off controllers, uh, either all controllers, all non Dev Express controllers. You can check them on and off individually until you find that controller that's being problematic. Uh, and we've, we've found that helpful uh, over the years. Hey, it was really, really hey. Cool. I have used it several times. We had a, yeah. pro a problem with an application with a lot of performance issues. And I just was like, where is this? A lot of queries coming from. I have no idea where is this? I deactivated all the controllers with your tool that I think that is really nice. I found it actually on the Dev Express Center. And I actually pinpoint the controller that it was giving me the error, fix the error and good to go. 
And that was a big help. That saved me a lot of time. Yeah, I, I think we should include that in the next meetup or maybe in a, a video with, with Yamachant that we use and remember, Javier, and I think it's really neat because for identify controllers that are creating performance issues, it's amazing. You can just turn it off and you will know where it is. So it's, it's nice. That's something I do wish DevExpress would include in, in the base is the option to turn on that benchmarking so that you can see how long it takes for each controller to become activated uh, or deactivated. I agree. Activated. That will be, well, that will be nice. That, but I think that, 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 that that's a, a whole another topic and this is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can go, we're like a specialist on going off topic mm -hmm. for like 40 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Are there any more questions about your controllers and window controllers? <laughs>